SARS is one of the most dreaded presentation of coronavirus infection. COVID-19 pandemic has overwhelmed our medical system. As a result, many patients who require mechanical ventilation have been managed by non-intensivists on the general medical floor. Ventilators are becoming scarce commodities. One of the less familiar ventilators that has been deployed is LTV 1200 ventilator by Care Fusion. This presentation is mostly adapted from the LTV 1200 ventilator user manual. It is not meant to replace the manual, but a concise introduction to help intensivists as well as non-intensivists using the ventilator. I have no conflict of interest pertaining to the subject discussed. This ventilator is designed for invasive as well as non-invasive ventilation. The circuit has two limbs. Inspiration and expiration, both are connected to the patient Y. A humidifier or filter can be added to the circuit. The inspiratory limb is connected to the ventilator via a 22 mm adapter. Within the ventilator, it is connected to sub-ambient relief valve that allows the patient to inspire spontaneously from room air in the event of failure. The expiration limb has exhalation valve that closes during inspiration and directs the air to the patient and opens during expiration so patient gas is exhausted to atmosphere. It also allows the measurement of the exhaled flow and it is connected to the ventilator with a tubing that allows the control of the PEEP. The patient Y has two pressure sensing lines connected to a differential pressure transducer that allows the measurement of the tubing pressure and derives the flows and volumes to trigger the alarms, as well as feedback signals during pressure breath. Let me show you the ports on the ventilator side. On the right, the main inspiratory limb is connected via 22 mm adapter. The sense lines from the patient Y are connected to the pressure transducer ports that are color-coded, yellow and white. The third transparent line is connected to the exhalation port. On the left side, the oxygen inlet port can be connected directly to a high-pressure oxygen source or via an adapter to a low-pressure oxygen source. The power input port is for the power source. And there are two communication ports that can be connected to an optional graphic monitor, patient assist call system, or remote alarm cable. It's very easy to start LTV. After connecting it to the power source, connect the tubing to the ventilator, then connect the sense lines. Turn LTV on by pushing the on standby button located in the left lower corner of the interface. The main display will show the patient setting menu with same patient on. Rotate the set value knob clockwise until new patient is on and select. The display will show a setting for patient menu. Toggle with the value knob to the correct patient size, infant, pediatric or adult and select. That's all what it takes and you're ready to go. Let me review few concepts of ventilation before I pursue the description of LTV interface. LTV can deliver two kinds of breath, pressure and volume breath. Pressure breath is delivered by elevating the circuit pressure to a preset pressure that is maintained during the inspiration. The inspiratory phase termination is determined by the preset inspiratory time or terminated when the flow decelerates to a preset adjustable percentage of the peak flow. By default, in control or assist control mode, pressure breath is time terminated as opposed to pressure support modality where the inspiratory phase of the spontaneous breath is flow terminated. Regardless, the cycling mechanism can be optionally changed from the extended feature menu. The rise in the pressure can be also adjusted from the extended feature menu. Nine different profiles are available. Profile 1 has the steepest rise and profile 9 has the slowest rise. In volume breath, a preset tidal volume is delivered over a preset inspiratory time. Thus, the inspiration is time terminated. The flow depends on the tidal volume and the inspiratory time and delivered in a decelerating way. It is calculated so that the final flow is 50% of the initial peak flow. When the initial flow is less than 20 liter per minute, the final flow remains at 10 liter per minute and the waveform is flattened. LTV ventilator can provide different modes of ventilation. In controlled mode, the preset volume or pressure breath are given at a specific rate. Triggered breaths are not allowed. 
As opposed to assist control mode, the breath, whether volume or pressure, are delivered at a minimum specific rate. However, the patient can trigger additional assisted breath. These additional breaths are delivered at the pre-specified pressure or volume. In synchronized intermittent mechanical ventilation mode, SIMV, the breaths are delivered at a minimum specified rate. The patient can trigger additional breath. These additional breaths could be augmented with some level of support. Last is the continuous positive airway pressure, CPAP. It is a spontaneous breathing mode where the patient triggers the ventilator and determines the rate. The breath could be with or without support. This is a general view of the interface. The displays are in black. Some are controlled by a blue-gray button underneath them. The exception is the main display. Its control button is superimposed on its edge. Some buttons are coupled with LED indicator. The rounded blue wheel is a toggle knob that allows changing indices and navigating menu. This is showing the right upper corner of the ventilator. It has indicator related to patient effort that illuminate with each triggered breath. The other LEDs are indicator related to the power supply. This ventilator can be powered from external AC adapter or external DC battery source. When used, its LED indicator would illuminate green if acceptable or yellow when it's low. It's off if the ventilator is operating from its internal battery. It has also a chargeable internal battery with indicator for the charging and the battery level status. A blinking charge status indicator means that the ventilator is performing pre-charging testing. Red illuminated indicates that the internal battery cannot be charged and service should be called. The internal battery level indicator could illuminate green, amber or red when the battery would last approximately 45, 10 or 5 minutes respectively. It's off when the ventilator is operating from external power supply. Uh, let me now go over the different display. The airway pressure display highlighted in green is a bar composed of 60 LEDs that display the airway pressure variability in real time. It can also have a single LED that shows the peak inspiratory pressure on the prior breath, but this is an optional extended feature. The control displays that I'm highlighting with blue frame could be solid bright, dimmed intensity, blank, or flashing. A solid bright display means that it is currently acting or that it is selected for a change. This will put all other control displays into dim density. A dim display indicates that it's inactive in the current mode or when another control is selected for a change. Blank displays are seen when the ventilator is operated from the battery without selecting any control button or when the feature is not installed on the ventilator. For example, the oxygen blender. A flashing control display while toggling will be seen when the limit is reached. And occasionally, another display involved in the same limitation will start flashing. For example, if setting the rate will conflict with the inspiratory time, both rate and the inspiratory time display will flash together. Note that some displays can show dashes. This indicates that the control is available but turned off. For example, we can see dashes in the rate when we set the modality to CPAP, or dashes in the sensitivity when the mode is controlled rather than assist control. The alarm displays are usually bright solid, indicating the alarm limit set. If an alarm occurs, the related alarm display will start flashing simultaneously with audible alarm and alarm message in the main display. The main display window and its control button that I am highlighting with a red frame serves three purposes. First, it shows the alarm description in the event of alarm occurrence. Second, it allows entering the menu and setting the extended feature. This can be accomplished by pushing and holding the select button for three seconds. And I will touch on that toward the end of my talk. Third, it shows the monitored data from the patients. By pushing the select button once, the display shows the data in a scanning mode. If select button is pushed a second time, the data scanned will halt. The display will show a single parameter, then each push will manually toggle to the next monitor parameter. Let's talk a bit about buttons. 
three types exist. Control button that allows setting indices for the ventilator and alarm boundaries. Mode button that allow toggling between breath types and vent mode. And function buttons that perform some function when pushed. Let me start with control buttons highlighted with red frame. Upon selecting a control button, its associate display becomes bright while all other displays dimmed. At this point, the value toggle knob can be rotated clockwise or counterclockwise to change the selected parameter. Once done, the button can be used to set the parameter and all active displays will become bright again. As I mentioned, the main display control button is superimposed on its edge. It is used to set the optional extended features that do not have their own display. The mode button highlighted in blue frame allows selecting the breath type or the vent mode. For example, to change the vent mode, when its control button is pushed, a flashing indicator appears at the next available mode. If pushed again, the new mode will be selected and the indicator will constantly illuminate. The third kind of buttons are the function buttons highlighted in green frame. Pushing the manual breath will deliver an extra breath at the preset volume or pressure. Pushing and holding the O2 flush button will increase the oxygen delivered to 100% for a predetermined period. This period is adjustable from the extended feature control. Notice that this button is a control button as well as a function button. Low pressure oxygen source is a feature that allows the ventilator to accept low pressure source. When selected, its indicator will be on. The oxygen display show dim dashes. The amount of oxygen delivered depend on the inlet flow and the minute ventilation. The oxygen flush control becomes inactive and the high pressure oxygen source alarm is activated. By default, this function is not selected. The indicator is off and the low oxygen pressure alarm is activated. The panel controls can be locked to avoid accidental changes. To turn the lock on, push the button and the indicator will be on. Two levels of difficulty unlocking are available. The default is easy unlocking achieved by single push on the control lock button. If hard unlocking is set from the extended feature menu, unlocking would require pushing and holding the button for 3 seconds. One of the most important function buttons for monitoring is the inspiratory and expiratory hold. This allows the measurement of plateau pressure and auto peep. Pushing the button will toggle between the following measurement in the main display, inspiratory hold, expiratory hold, or normal display. To perform inspiratory hold maneuver, the button is pushed once. The main display will show inspiratory hold and the LED indicator will start flashing. At this point, if the button is pushed and held, the ventilator will perform an inspiratory hold for 0.6 seconds. The display will show the real-time changes in the pressure of the circuit. When the button is released, the display cycles every 2 seconds between the driving pressure, static compliance, and the plateau pressure measured. To perform expiratory hold maneuver, the button should be pushed twice. The main display will show expiratory hold and the LED indicator will start flashing. At this point, if the button is pushed and held, the ventilator will perform an expiratory hold at the end of the exhaled volume or pressure breath. The display will show real-time pressure changes in the circuit. When released, the display will show auto peep measured. If any patient effort is detected, the maneuver will be terminated. Note that inspiratory hold cannot be performed on pressure breath. Last function button that I will describe is the silence reset. As I mentioned, when an alarm occurs, a flashing alarm message and a flashing associate control display appears along with an alarm sound. To silence an active alarm, the alarm reset should be pushed once. The audible alarm will be silenced for 60 seconds only, but the flashing display will continue. To clear an inactive alarm, push the silence reset again. On the other hand, to cancel an active alarm, push the silence reset twice. This will clear the audible and the visual alarm and the silence period will be terminated. This button can be used preemptively to silence an alarm for 60 seconds or to silence an inoperable ventilator. Let me show you examples of ventilator setting. 
The mod selected here is assist control. However, the sensitivity is showing dashes. Thus, the patient will not trigger the ventilator and the mod is control ventilation. The breath type is pressure. So we do set the pressure above PEEP, in this example set to 20 above PEEP of 10, and the inspiratory time, in this example, 1 second. Of note, when setting the rate and the inspiratory time, the main display will show the calculation of the I to E ratio. In this example, the selected mode is SIMV CPAP. However, the pressure support is set to 8, so this is IMV with pressure support ventilation where each spontaneous patient triggered breath is augmented with pressure support of 8 above PEEP. The breath type is volume, so we have to set also the volume and the inspiratory time. Of note, while adjusting either the volume or the inspiratory time, the main display will show calculation of the peak flow. In this last example, the patient has no rate set, so the mode is spontaneous CPAP. In the example, it's CPAP or PEEP of 5. However, the pressure support is also set to 10, so this is CPAP 5 pressure support of 10. And each patient's spontaneous breath is supported by inspiratory pressure of 10 above CPAP of 5. As I previously mentioned, there are other functions and alarms that do not have their own display. They are adjusted and controlled from the main display window and its set button. Example of these functions are high frequency alarm, high peep alarm, rise time, flow termination, control unlock, and spontaneous breathing trial, not to mention all. The menu will be activated if the select button is pushed and held for 3 seconds. The set value wheel can be used to toggle the menu available. The select button is used after toggling to select from the menu, set the value, or exit. Thank you for listening and I hope this presentation was helpful.